Martha Stocks was born in Shaley House, Holmfirth, just before Christmas, 1823. This is the house next to Holmfirth Library. January the 11th, 1824, she was baptised in Holmfirth Parish Church. And the first sign of Martha's existence is in the parish register of Holy Trinity Church, Holmfirth, where she was baptised by the Reverend Bellamy. Confirmation of Martha's transformation from Holmfirth Lass to German Baroness can be found in Holmside Park in the centre of Holmfirth. This was, until about 1855, the main burial ground for Holmfirth Parish Church. The cemetery was deconsecrated in the 1960s and converted into the pleasant park we find today. Luckily, when this conversion took place, the gravestones were preserved and they can now be seen displayed all round the edge and on the paths of the park. For the local historian, they provide valuable information on the residence and the way of life of the people of Holmfirth in the 18th and 19th century. One of these gravestones, marked here with the red arrow, is that of the Stocks family, Martha's family. The gravestone gives us a lot of biographical information about the Stocks family, her parents, her three brothers and her two sisters, most of whom actually are not buried in this cemetery. And at the very bottom of the gravestone, to be read only with some difficulty, Martha's death in Leipzig in 1878 is recorded. Martha's father, James Stocks, was a surgeon in Holmfirth, dying there in April 1832. We know little about him, especially where, or even if, he received his medical training. In December 1812, James married an Anne Shaw in All Hallows Church, Ormondbury, Yorkshire. Anne Shaw belonged to one of the wealthiest families in the Holm Valley at the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century, living in a rather splendid house called Stubbing at Inchliffe Mill. And as we've already noted, their daughter Martha was born in Holmfirth in December 1823. After the death of James Stocks, the family moved away from Holmfirth, and with the help of the 1841 census, we find them living at Kirkgate in Leeds. Martha and her mother are living there together with her two brothers, Robert and George. Note that the 1841 census rounds people's ages up to end in zero or five. Martha, in fact, is not 15, she is nearly 18 years old. The man who will transform Martha's life arrives in Leeds in 1844. His name is Alexander Speck and he is the oldest son of Baron Maximilian Speck of Leipzig. The Baron was a landowner and breeder of sheep on a colossal scale in the Kingdom of Saxony. He had a flock of over a quarter of a million sheep producing high quality wool, which he exported to England amongst other countries. The surviving port entry records for the beginning of the 19th century show that he made several visits to this country, selling wool. And in fact, in 1803, he came to Huddersfield and visited Mr. Whitaker's mill at Deaton. Son Alexander 
had already led quite an exciting life before coming to Leeds. He has spent two years in Australia trying to set himself up as a sheep farmer, but without success. Ship's records show that he left Liverpool in January 1841 on the sailing ship the Lady Raffles, on which was a six-month voyage to his final destination, Sydney. Alexander left a detailed record of why his venture in Australia was not a success. He found the country, its climate, rather unpleasant and the people he had to deal with not always trustworthy. Not surprising since at this time Australia was Britain's penal colony. His reason then to move to Leeds was perhaps to demonstrate to his father that he could still prove himself to be a successful businessman. It appears on the evidence that Alexander met Martha at a tea party in Leeds, perhaps at the house of one of her brothers, who was also in the wool trade. They hit it off immediately, became engaged, and in November 1849 were married in Leeds Parish Church, in spite of opposition from Alexander's father back in Leipzig. The 1853 directory from Leeds shows us that Alex had set up business at 15 Trinity Street in Leeds and that he had set up home with Martha at 1 Mount Preston. That is this house here at the end of the row. Alas, no longer there. Much of this land has now been taken over by Leeds University. Two sons were born to Martha at 1 Mount Preston. The oldest son, Alexander, and her second born, Hermann, who would later go on to have a distinguished career as a German diplomat. Following a house move to Borngrove Villas Headingley, a third son was born, Gustav, in 1854. Following yet another house move to Kingston Terrace of Woodhouse Lane, a fourth son, James, was born in 1856. The regular upmarket house moves suggest that the business was doing well and their final residence at Kingston Terrace is now the Kingston Hotel. Alexander was very much a committed Anglophile and in 1852 in Leeds he was granted British citizenship. But in 1856 a perhaps not unexpected upheaval came in their lives. In Leipzig, Alexander's father, the first Baron Maximilian, died, and Alexander, as oldest son, would inherit the title. And in 1857, the family sold up in Leeds and moved together to live for the rest of their lives in Leipzig. And since her husband had inherited the title Baron Alexander Speck von Sternburg, Martha Stocks of Home Firth became Baroness Martha Speck von Sternburg. You just need to go to the right tea parties in Leeds. Martha's first home was this typical Schloss or country house on the family estate in the village of Lutzschene, just a few kilometres from the centre of Leipzig. Documents preserved in the family archive show, I suppose, the kind of official recognition and welcome that aristocrats would have expected at this time. Their arrival was May 1857. Martha's early years in Holmfirth and in Leeds had been explored via the usual channels, familiar to most people doing family history research. But I wanted to know much more about Martha's life in Germany. And to this end, in German Google, I entered one word, Sternburg, and received in response a newspaper item where it named a Baron Speck von Sternburg.
The article stated that the Baron had just handed over to the new museum in Leipzig the whole family collection of old masters. Was this any link to Martha's family? I emailed the museum and got a very prompt response. Yes, indeed, came the answer. Martha was my great-grandmother, and you have found me at the right time because I'm writing my family history and I would like to know, too, more of Martha's early life. This was followed by a prompt invitation to come to Leipzig to visit the Baron still living in Martha's old home and explore at my leisure the family archive. So into Lufthansa and over to Leipzig I went. Not surprisingly, the Sternburg family archive is extensive, predating Martha's arrival by several centuries. More recently, the Baron has handed over the complete archive to the Archive Centre in Leipzig, where it is being digitised to give access to anybody who is interested. To mark this donation, an exhibition of the archive was put on display in the Archive Centre, where visitors came for several months to examine the archive. This section of the archive is devoted to Martha, and you can see some pictures from Home Firth in the top left. The archive itself has led quite an exciting life in recent years. During the communist period, when the Sternburg family was booted out of the family home in Leipzig, the archive documents were hidden by the village pastor in the tower roof of the local church. When the communist regime collapsed in 1989, and the Baron returned to his family home, the archive, the complete set of documents, were handed over to him by the current pastor. And what of the life of Alexander and Martha in Lucina? Well, Alexander's first act, almost, was to pull down the old German country house and replace it with one in the English Gothic style, ever the English and Anglophile. The inside of the Schloss perhaps retains much of the atmosphere and decoration which Martha herself would remember, including one room with many family portraits and photographs on the wall. In the years following her arrival in Lucena, Martha would continue to produce children almost on an annual basis. After the four in Leeds, another eight would be born in Lucena. In total, ten boys and two girls, all of whom survived into adulthood. In the archive, there is extensive evidence of the activity of these twelve children. For them, the large house and the even larger parkland with its river and lakes seem to have been a kind of Enid Blyton paradise. When not looking after the welfare of her children, Martha's other probable role at the Schloss was as curator of one of the largest collections of old masters in Western Germany. Martha's father-in-law, the first baron, had, throughout his lifetime, amassed some 250 old masters, including this Rubens here. These were on display in the Schloss and the members of the public were welcome to come on certain days to view the collection. This is the collection which the present Baron has now donated to the new museum in Leipzig, where they can be seen today. In 1858, Martha returned to Yorkshire with her five children, an English governess and two German nursemaids. And almost certainly the reason for this perhaps unexpected return to England can be found in Holmside Park on the family gravestone 
which shows us that three of her siblings all died within a few months of each other and that her brother James had suffered a stroke. Her brother James, who had been working as a doctor in Halifax, was too sick to look after himself, so Martha took him with her back to Lucina, where he lived for a few more years and is buried there in the family vault. Here we see Alexander and Martha with nearly all of their children as adults. They too had, for the most part, successful lives, the men in particular in the military. Perhaps reflecting his lifelong Anglophilia and love of all things English, Alexander planted in the parkland an English oak tree for each of his twelve children. Some of these still survive, although the nameplates attached to each one disappeared, unfortunately, during the Communist period. And here Martha's great-grandson looks on with affection. Martha's sixth child was a daughter, also called Martha, born in 1859, one suspects a chip off the old block. She made a successful marriage into another branch of the German aristocracy, and here we see her in the 1920s with her brother Joseph, the grandfather of the present Baron. Martha died in 1941. Martha's twelfth and last child was also a daughter called Charlotte. She lost her life in the catastrophic bombing raid on Dresden in 1945. Martha's most distinguished son was perhaps her second born, Hermann. Born in Leeds in 1852, not expecting to inherit the title, he chose a career in the German diplomatic service and became German ambassador in China, in British India, and between 1903 and 1908 he was the German ambassador in Washington. It is perhaps ironic that the German ambassador in Washington regarded himself more as an Englishman than a German. He married an American millionaireess at St George's Hanover Square in London in 1900. In 1908, he was given what amounts virtually to a state funeral at the family estate at Lucina, and he is buried there in the family mausoleum. This is the last picture we have of Martha Stocks, the Baroness. She died in 1878 of what used to be called galloping consumption. Her death at a relatively young age was a grievous blow to both her husband and her children. Interestingly, Martha's death certificate shows that she did not even know the date of her own birth. She thought she was a year younger than she actually was. This was a common mistake made by people whose birth took place before official birth registration in 1837. Martha's husband, Alexander, would live on for many more years. This photograph was taken in 1910 when he was 19 years old. This family photograph, also taken in 1910, shows Alexander sitting in the middle. On his left is his son James, born in Leeds, who in a year's time will become the next Baron, and behind him his sister Martha. Standing at the back on the left, in the black dress, is the widow of Hermann, the American millionaireess Lillian Langham. Most of the Sternburg family, including Martha, find their last resting place in a family mausoleum situated in the extensive ground surrounding the Schloss. This picture shows it before the war and now as it has been restored in the last few years. In the 18th century and the first half of the 19th century, 
most of the Sternberg family wealth came from the export of high-quality wool to places like Britain. But in the second half of the 19th century, beer replaced wool as a major income, and they developed a family brewery in the centre of the village, which ended up supplying the whole of Germany with Sternberg beer. The brewery remained in production even through the communist period, but closed eventually in 1991. Branded Sternburg beer can still be obtained in Leipzig, but it has no connection now with the family. The Sternburg family were dispossessed of all their property in the Leipzig area by the communist government in East Germany in 1945. The family Schloss was used for a variety of purposes by the communist, falling into an advanced state of disrepair by the end of the communist regime. It needed considerable investment on the part of the Baron to restore it to its former glory. Much the same could be said for the extensive parkland surrounding the Schloss. This too became a kind of jungle, but this too has now been restored and is open to the general public in the Leipzig area. And it is right that we end by paying tribute to Martha's great-grandson, the present Baron Speck von Sternburg, for his huge and expensive commitment to restoring Martha's old home and its English-style park to its former glory. It is once again a major asset and source of pride for the people of Leipzig. <laughs>